Heinemann Podcast is a production of Heinemann Publishing. Heinemann is a provider of resources written by real teachers for real classrooms. Heinemann values teachers as decision makers and students as curious learners. Discover the path to lifelong professional learning at Heinemann.com. Heinemann, dedicated to teachers. I'm Brett from Heinemann. Today on the Heinemann Podcast, Writing Workshop. Author Ralph Fletcher wrote the book on Writing Workshop, Literally. Heinemann published Writing Workshop, The Essential Guide from Ralph Fletcher and co-author Joanne Portalupi in 2001. In it, they write, Students who learn to write well truly have one of the most powerful tools imaginable. I recently sat down with Ralph to talk more about Writing Workshop. During our conversation, Ralph stressed the importance of a teacher showing interest in their students' writing. He says when this happens, students become more open and it invites better teaching. He also talked about fostering student identity and how students need to feel comfortable in their classroom as if it were their home. I started our conversation by asking Ralph what teachers should consider in the first few weeks of writing workshop. Our goals, I think, change during the year. Uh, What we want to do at the beginning of the year is different than the middle and probably different from the end. Um, I think at the beginning of the year, you want to establish a sense uh, of the right tone in the classroom. I'm always... uh, Remember the quote by Peter Elbow, who said that a good writing teacher is both a good host and a good bouncer. Um, In other words, a host is very inviting, and the bouncer has the high standards. And I think that a writing teacher has to have both those um, aspects. But I think early in the year, you really want to be a good uh, host. Mm -hmm. You want to let those kids feel like they can write for you and that you're receptive. And how do you do that? Well, the, the, the way you do that, I think, is that you you really show interest in what they're writing. Mm-hmm. Um, you have to let their writing affect you. So to really be there as a human being before that we're there as a teacher with skills we want to teach. So if the kid, the, if the student writes something um, that's funny, laugh. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. And if it's, um, if it's a sad thing, you know, look that student in the eye and say, I'm really sorry that, that this happened. Because I think that one of the quotes that I always remember is that if you want to affect somebody You've got to let them affect you first. Mm. And so at the beginning of the year, when I'm moving around the classroom, talking to young writers, I really want to let them know that their writing is affecting me, Mm. uh, the content of it, what it's about. And I think that once you do that, those students will open up their themselves and, and then you've kind of created a space where you kind of have earned the right to teach them some stuff. How important is the classroom space and how does that space enable the teacher to confer? Um, I think the space is very important um, in different ways. Uh, first of all, I think that the space has to reflect you. Um, well, you and the students, but it's got to feel comfortable for you. Um, I think that um, having, I mean, at a very practical level, having the desks grouped in clumps allows you to confer more easily with students. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that like if you have a long row of like, let's say eight desks sort of stuck together, it's very hard to get between student number two and student number three. There's like Mm -hmm. no room for you in there. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think that you want to make it so that you can um, confer. And I I think conferring at students' desks is important. Um, Sometimes it's tempting to just want to pull them up to your desk, but then there's there's a kind of secondary conferring that takes place when Mm -hmm. you talk to uh, students. Um, There may be a student who's adjacent to the student you're you're conferring with, and that student is listening also uh, to the conversation. Mm -hmm. The other thing that about space, though, is that I just want to say a couple more things. Mm-hmm. I think it's important that children feel like their classroom is a place where they can be at home. And what I mean by at home, it's got to be a place where they feel comfortable. They can mm-hmm. be themselves. Some students really like to write at their desks. Some kids really like to just like lay down on the rug with a, a pad of paper, or maybe a uh, you know a marker um, and a clipboard. And I I like to think that a classroom can accommodate both. And the third thing I want to say is that I think it's important to have a common space, particularly Mm -hmm. in elementary schools where the kids can gather on the floor for a share and for like a little pep talk or a mini lesson at the beginning. It's Again, it's tempting to sort of speak to the whole class, but there's something about that little ritual of bringing the kids together, Mm -hmm. talking to them for five or seven minutes before you send them back that is important. So um, I think having a common space for that and for read alouds and for share is very important. What tools do you feel are essential to the writing workshop? 
Well, in terms of tools, you know, writing is one of those things that's fairly um, low intensive in terms of material. It doesn't need a lot of stuff. I mean, mm-hmm. uh, basically, there needs to be, you know, different kinds of paper. I think that's important, especially for the uh, primary students so the kids have choice. That uh, We don't all write on big pieces of paper. We don't all write on little pieces. I think you want to that's, – that's a – Reflection of the choice that you're giving children in the classroom. Mm-hmm. Um, I am a big believer in our writer's notebook. Mm-hmm. Um, I always say that it's not the tool in a classroom, but it is a powerful tool that um, you will, will want to be aware of. And there's been a lot written about that. I've written some stuff about it also. But um, having a, a notebook is important because... I think that the notebook is meant to be taken home. You know, mm-hmm. sometimes the message we give kids is that you're a writer between nine and nine forty-five in the morning, <laughs> but the day is long. Yeah. And a, a child who goes to see his mom or dad every other weekend, that kid has stories to tell, mm-hmm. and that notebook can follow him or her home, and so they can be writers all the time. So um, that's important. And I want to just say another obvious thing, but it's, it's worth mentioning, is that I think that one of the tools in a writing classroom, obviously, is uh, an abundance of mentor texts, mm-hmm. different kinds of examples, of poetry collections, picture books. Um, you want to have those in the classroom. You could almost make the argument that the writing in the classroom can only be as strong as the literature that supports and surrounds and buoys it up. So um, I think that <clears throat> I mean, it's not that you need to have 100 or 200 copies of books, but you need to have a selection of strong books that you can refer to again and again mm-hmm. during the year. You've talked about the importance of low-stakes writing. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? Low-stakes writing is something that I've been exploring in uh, my newest book for the, with Heinemann. And the, my thinking is this, that I think that all kinds of writing are really important. Um, it's, a, it's a thinking tool. We think a lot on paper, but it's a little bit more than just like talking with somebody. When you write, I think there's a process of distilling your ideas a little bit. You sort of explore it somewhat. Mm-hmm. Um, there's some sort of transformational process that goes on, and I don't want to be mystical, but I'm not sure you can even quantify it, but I think <laughs> that like the writing is is important. So we want to encourage a lot of low-stakes writing. And by low-stakes, I mean writing that where they're not being um, graded, mm-hmm. corrected, um, assessed, Nobody's casting a critical eye on them, but they're they're using writing as a way to think loud and push their thinking on writing. By the way, this is the kind of writing that we do every day for mm-hmm. ourselves, making lists, um, jotting a note. Um, I think it's uh, what literate people do in the world. So um, I, I envision classrooms where kids are doing lots of this kind of writing, um, and I think that there's ways we can encourage it, um, and I think that... Um, Again, I think teachers want to find a way to make sure that kids feel comfortable doing it and that they feel like they're at home and that they can really be themselves to explore. Because oftentimes when kids do this kind of um, writing, they, they haven't figured everything out. It's not like they, they're competent, they, they, they understand everything. They, it's very tentative kind of writing. Yeah. And um, so we have to respond to it as such. Um, you know, I think that one of the things that's happened in recent years is that writing workshop, as we know, it has become a little bit more, um, let's call it domesticated, settled. Um, it's become more academic, frankly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that in many cases, the spark, the sizzle has gone out of the writing workshop. Um, I've had teachers who have confided to me that they fear that's happening and that their kids are somewhat turned off to writing oh, wow. because of the proliferation of um, – academic genres. Some of it has been sparked by Common Core Mm -hmm. and standards uh, movement. But whatever the reason, um, I think that we need to keep our eye on the big picture and remember that our goal, particularly with uh, elementary schools, we want to encourage, we want to really create kids who, A, define themselves as writers, and B, kids who are passionate about writing, who love it, Mm -hmm. who really say, I love to write, I love to read. Um, I think that under this informal writing um, and low stakes writing, I also I, I kind of think of it as kind of like a green belt writing. Mm-hmm. You know, um, in the world at large, uh, cities have created green spaces or green belts where uh, they can be a, a park. There's wildlife. There's nature. Uh, it's not really all manicured, and 
they have seen the tangible benefits of doing that. I think in as our writing workshop becomes a little bit more settled and um, uh, format driven, frankly, I think that there's an increasing need to have green belt writing in our classroom where kids can do the things that kids have always done with their writing, working with a buddy, writing a science fiction piece, things that may not fit in tradi- tr- into traditional genre mm-hmm. uh, or um, units necessarily, but that are things that kids are passionate about and that also help them create um, interest. Well, it makes them interested in writing and also it, it's going to help them create stamina uh, by doing this kind of writing. So I envision classrooms where we have so almost side by side, we have workshop writing, but mm-hmm. also more of this low stakes green belt writing that kids are initiating on their own. I, I do, I do want to say that I think that we need to ask ourselves about identity as writers, because I think that's really important, um, how children define themselves, you know, and this is true in every field, of course. Um, you know, there are some kids in first grade, if you ask about your first graders, who's good at baseball? All the kids <laughs> put their hands up. I'm awesome. <laughs> but by about fourth grade, the kids know she's really good. He's really good. I'm not that good. Yeah. And it, it, it's, it, it's really, and I did it for myself. I'll just speak personally. I did it with myself with art. You know, mm-hmm. at some point around third, fourth grade, I realized that some kids can draw, and I, I, I was not one of those kids, yeah. which is really sad when you think about it. I'm nine years old, but I've already decided I'm not, I'm not an artist. Yeah. Um, we see that in writing also. We see that in reading also. I'm not a writer. I'm not a reader. We want to create schools where kids can say with confidence, I am a writer. I am a reader. And I think that that will happen if they take pleasure in doing it. Mm-hmm. I think pleasure is not just a nice little thing to talk about. I think it's very important because if kids see, if they, they experience pleasure in doing it, they'll do it on their own, they'll do it at home, and they'll define themselves as writers, which is really, really important. Well, and in many ways, you know, you're writing to discover your identity too. I mean, it's, it's that, that the joy of that writing draws out your own identity and learning that. Yes, that's true. I think that there's a lot of, uh, and there's a lot of kids who basically wouldn't see themselves as writers initially, but if we create um, a space where they can they can do that kind of writing, they discover, hey, you know, I, I kind of like this myself. I, again, I've seen the thing happen to my, myself. Um, my wife was an artist, has, you know, let me sort of do some dabbling in, in art, and I've realized that I'm, I'm not as hopeless as I thought. <laughs> and uh, I think that, um, you know, we, we, should, we should be... Um, we should be opening doors, mm-hmm. not closing doors in elementary school and, and middle school. So we want kids to hang in there as long as they can. Um, and I think that trying to like ask ourselves, what can we do to really foster that self-identity as readers and writers is really important. It's a question that I keep asking myself. My thanks to author Ralph Fletcher for his time today. If you'd like to learn more about his book, Writing Workshop, The Essential Guide, or any of Ralph's books with Heinemann, check out Heinemann.com where you can read sample chapters and more. Be sure to also follow Ralph on Twitter, at Fletcher Ralph, where you'll soon hear more about his newest book with Heinemann, due out in early 2017. We'll talk with Ralph again then. We'd love for you to rate the Heinemann Podcast in iTunes and Google Play, share a comment with us, and be sure to tell others about our show. If you have an idea for a Heinemann Podcast, tweet us at Heinemann Pub or send us an email at socialmedia at Thanks for listening.